Hey what's up everybody, thank you for checking this video. If you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. But even if you don't, enjoy and happy coding! From a developer that hates plugins, here's a plugin that doesn't suck. Elementor is a live page builder for WordPress. It's amazing, it's open source, faster than the competition, easy to use, it doesn't require any coding for anyone to just build a beautiful page. It's totally free for you to use it, download it and install it on all the websites that you want and if you really really like it you should consider buying the pro version that it's not expensive at all and it comes with a tons of new features. Click the link in the description below the video to learn more. So let's take a look on how to generate a proper AJAX request without using jQuery or without using any third party framework but doing everything with vanilla JavaScript. So we're already collecting the URL, now inside the URL we should submit all the parameters, all the data that we collected in the previous episode, so the name, email and message. In order to do that it's kind of like not easy because with jQuery we can submit just the parameters as a data request and then automatically those parameters will be handled by jQuery and uh, PHP can read them as a JSON format. But because in this episode we're going to use the default fetch method of vanilla JavaScript, we need to format the data that a form submits into a, like a proper form submit data in JavaScript. And I know that sounds kind of confusing, but let follow me on that. So let's Let's prepare this data by specifying a variable called params, or it could be parameters, or it could be arguments, whatever you want to do it. And then these params, it's equal to a new class, a default class of JavaScript that it's an API of the browser called form data. And the form data basically collects all the input fields and everything that's inside a form and formats it properly in order to be submitted as a data form, like a, as a form submit, as an HTTP POST request. And of course the form that we need to collect inside this class, it's our almighty testimonial form that we already have everything here, it's collected, we are tapping this element by ID so we know it's our contact form and we don't have an issue. So now that we have this form data that is properly formatted, we need to format these once again inside another class in order to convert it into parameters, into URL parameters. So we need to wrap this thing around the regular parentheses and then say also this a new class called URL or uppercase search parameters or search params if you want to call it like that. So basically we are grabbing a testimonial form, we are generating this new class to bundle the data into a proper form data class and then we are bundling once again all the form data into these URL search parameters that will allow us to submit these parameters has a URL search request or something like really linear that we can send as a body of a fetch request. And I know this sounds confusing, this sounds kind of stupid, but that's how it's necessary in order for uh, WordPress to handle a fetch request. And I don't know if it's fault of the fetch, it's the fault of WordPress, or there's a better method, but this is pretty straightforward, it's pretty easy. So now it's time to tap the fetch, but before uh, submitting and triggering the fetch request in order to submit our JavaScript to PHP, we need to let the user know that we're like that the form is actually triggering, it's actually working in the back. Background. So let's trigger this little thing that we have at the bottom of the form uh, called uh, JS form submission. So this message says submission in process, please wait, and then we have the three dots. Let's tap this class and let's show this field message because that's what we need. So let's say once again tap the testimonial form and let's tap the query selector and the query selector is the class JS testimonial form and let's remember to specify the period or dot in the beginning and as usual class list add the almighty show class. Perfect! Okay now if we uh, comment these out just a little second and we check if we refresh here and we try to add a little thing message message submit so now at the bottom we have the submission in process 
please wait with the three dots so the user knows that, oh, something's going on, I should wait. So now let's take care of building the fetch request and the fetch action of JavaScript accepts a bunch of parameters. The first parameter is the URL, so we need to say where to submit this fetch request. The second parameter, it's inside uh, the curly bracket, so we can specify a bunch of different attributes. The first attribute that we need to specify is the method. How do we want to submit this fetch request? Has to be a get, has to be a post. Let's say we want to submit it as a post request, so our information and all the data of the user will not appear on the URL search bar. Let's put a comma there, and then we can submit the body of the fetch request with the parameters or the variable params that is taking care of collecting all the information of our form and formatting into a proper, a proper class of URL search parameters. Perfect. Then the beauty of the fetch request is that it has a built-in promise in it. So that means that automatically wait for the returns or the, like the results of whatever URL of whatever data is gonna come back from this URL before triggering what's happening next. And in order to check what's happening next, we can say that with a dot, then, so we're saying, let's do the fetch request and let's ship these parameters, let's submit it via the body. Then, after the fetch request is done, let's take care of checking the results. So we're gonna have a variable called results or we're gonna have a variable, something is coming, we're gonna have an array, something is coming back that we will define in PHP. And here we can deal with arrow functions as well to streamline these actions. So the results can be equal to the arrow function to a results formatted in a JSON because that's how we're gonna submit back our data in order to make PHP and JavaScript conversate properly with each other, we have to format our data into a JSON data and then we have to decode it with this JSON method in JavaScript. So inside this, after we have the results of the JSON, we can once again concatenate another action and say, hey, catch whatever error is happening. So the catch will trigger only if there's an error. So only if the result message is not happening or the result message has a 404 or 500 or 501 or a basically an HTTP error inside the result message. So if that happens, the catch method will trigger and the error can be equal with the error function to a series of actions. So we can open the curly brackets. Inside the curly brackets, we can first trigger this method here, the reset messages that we defined before or in the previous lesson that will reset all the messages or so even the submission in progress message and then we can uh, trigger an error. So we can say that if there's an error, let's tap the testimonial form, select the class called JS form error that is exactly the class that we define here with this predefined error message. And we can say that, of course, if there's an error, tap the class list of this and add the class show. So if there's an error, hide all the previously shown messages and show the error message. Otherwise, we can continue with another then, so there's no error, nothing has been catched. Let's deal with just the simple response and we can define this variable. You can call this variable however you want. And once again, with the error function, we can pass this response to a nameless functions inside here. Once again, let's reset these messages because let's clear all the messages and we can deal with the outcome. So because these response will come from PHP, I'm not gonna define anything until I have the PHP data that it's coming back. I already know how to set up the PHP data, but I don't wanna do it before we actually set up all these things. So here we can say deal with the response, something like that. So let's just leave it like that for now. So if we go back in our front end once again, we refresh, we'd add a bunch of stupid data, we access the network page, we clear the network here, and we go into the XHR that is just the asynchronous call. Everything that is happening from an API call, a fetch request will be listed in this XHR filter. We submit, look what happened. Here in the admin Ajax, we have a fetch request that has, of course, a status of 400, but it's happening from our form.js on line 41. And if we tap here, 
you know what is happening. We have our fetch URL request to the proper URL that we're passing. It's a post request, that's perfect. And inside the post request, what well, we have the form data with our name, email, and message, everything part of that form data. So everything is happening properly. Of course, we have a return of zero for two main reasons. First, we're not passing an action to PHP and WordPress is not dealing with these post requests because we haven't defined an Ajax post request or an Ajax method in order to deal with these requests. So let's do it super quickly. First of all, let's go inside our contact form and because we are submitting all the information with the search parameter inside our post request, if we need to pass something more, to PHP or to WordPress, we need to add input fields in our form. So always put stuff inside the form tag and let's do it right at the bottom. Let's specify in a hidden input field. So input type hidden, there is the name action that it's what WordPress listens to during an Ajax request, listens to the name of the action and then redirects these post request to the method that matches that action. So our action could have a value called like submit underscore testimonial, because that's what it is this form, right? We're submitting the testimonial. So now that we have these actions submit testimonial, we can tap our PHP backend, our testimonial controller and define that PHP action in order to deal with this post request. So I'm going to open my sidebar and let's go inside ink base and here we have our testimonial controller perfect so in the testimonial controller inside the register method where everything gets activated let's define right after the short code a bunch of ajax request action so once again add action and the action that we want to listen to and we want to say to wordpress hey listen to this action needs to be called exactly like the action we specified in our form but we did wp ajax prefix so let's say wp underscore ajax underscore the name of the action that we specify so submit underscore testimonial and these action, whenever WordPress listens and recognizes these action as an Ajax request, we need to redirect it to a method inside this class. So this, let's say the method can be called exactly like the action. So we don't have any confusion. Let's say that the action is the same as the method. And before doing anything else, let's duplicate this line and let's extend this prefix with WP Ajax, another underscore, no prev. And the no prev is really important because it gives the ability to users that are not authenticated, so are not registered, are not signed up as admin or regular registered user to submit an Ajax request. If we don't specify no prev, we're going to relate and we're going to limit these Ajax request listener only to users that are authenticated. But we don't want that. We want to open it to everyone. So now let's create the submit testimonial function. And I'm going to do it just here because I don't want to go up and down so many times. But you can put it wherever you want in your file. Public function submit testimonial no parameters need to be passed and here let's do just a couple of things before concluding this episode first let's echo something so for example let's echo yes i got your post request something <laughs> stupid like that and then let's remember at every end of every wp ajax method always put the wp die function built in of wordpress that will prevent that usual zero the return Turn or echo zero of every Ajax request in WordPress. If we don't do these, the script, the execution will continue and WordPress will continue running that and will hit the admin ajax.php file and will return with zero. So always remember to put the WP die. This is not going to interrupt or destroy your PHP script. Now, if we save it and we go back in our front end, we refresh once again, we fill up the form with a bunch of gibberish. And once again, in the network, XHR. Let's submit. Boom. We have status 200. That means that it was a success. It wasn't an error. Fetch. We're passing everything. All the data it's passed. And we are passing also the action submit testimonial that it's identical to the WP Ajax method that we defined. And if we check the response, look at that. Yes, I got your post request. That is the same hacko that we have in our method. Fantastic. So the thing that we have to do here and we're going to do in the next lesson is basically sanitize the data that gets passed 
store the data into testimonial CPT, the custom post type, and then send response that could be positive or negative based on this action. If this action fails or the data is not sanitized, we can send a negative response or a positive one. But that's pretty easy to do. Well, it's pretty much it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching and I talk to you in the next one.